Now he does have a bit of a wound on his back leg, but like I was saying earlier, I don't think it's anything I don't think it's anything too dramatic. I think I'm sure he'll be fine. And I was reading the update from I think it was in Koro today that apparently the other male lion actually had the worst um, side of it all. And unfortunately, um, the other male lion was actually found dead. So it seems like the Birmingham boys are here to stay, doing a very good job at defending his territory, his females, and everyone around. Now, updates on the radio are funny because apparently I think there are two of the Birmingham boys on a buffalo. Maybe I don't know if it's a buffalo, but they are on a kill somewhere on Torchwood. I want to say not too far from here. So I wonder if this one is actually at some point going to go join them. Oh, there's a little bit of blood there. Perhaps you should. Do you have a little bit of blood on your lip now? That wasn't there before, was it? Maybe he's reopened his wound. Huh. I wonder what just happened. Maybe actually by cleaning his wound, he's actually <laughs> made it a little bit worse. Because it seems like it's all around there. But like I said, I don't think it's anything to be too worried about. Maybe if we can just... We'll just hang around a little bit more. See if maybe he's got something on his lips. Yeah, he's got some blood there that I'm pretty sure wasn't there before. Oh, thank you for opening that up. Now, if you can just move your head a little bit so we can have a look, <laughs> that will be very kind of you. Oh, the gash there on the other leg. Okay. Hadn't seen that one before. Hmm. Well, that one looks a little bit more serious than the other one, but I also still don't think that this is too bad, judging by this angle. But we'll see. Oh, boy. Now you've put a lot more blood. Okay, perhaps he does have a bigger injury, because now that you've raised your head like that, you've put a lot more blood on your head. <laughs> he does look like a fierce warrior now, doesn't he? Sure. I feel a little bit sorry for you now with all this blood, but I would like it if you stood up so that we could assess your wounds. Mm. Hello, boy. And uh, yes, like I was saying earlier, some of more of the updates on the radio is that the Inkahumas are on Bufalsuk after a little bit of an absence, so hopefully they'll come uh, to us tomorrow. Oh, sorry, somebody's calling Taylor, but they actually mean Ali. Standing by. It's not too far from the Bufosa uh, cut line, so you'll see it's a prominent two track and there's a Gwari branch on the road. Alright, sorry, just trying to direct somebody onto the sighting. I think we're all quite interested in trying to see where all of this blood is coming from, because I think he might have another wound somewhere in there, because the gash at the bottom was didn't seem the one that was bleeding all that much, but perhaps what he did was actually when he stretched his leg, that puncture wound that he's got there, that's what he put on his face, and because of the stretching and so on, and because it hasn't scabbed yet, maybe that's where the blood came from. And boy, you see, you should stay around here. <laughs> Less lions to fight around this area. <laughs> Elizabeth, you're wondering if we ever intervene when animals are hurt. Well, different parks and reserves have different policies, but in the Sabi Sand, if it's something that's caused by another animal, if it's a natural... Um, issue then we do not intervene the reserve doesn't do anything rather than let the nature take its own course so for example for an injury like this we would not intervene because sometimes it's also putting the animal under a lot of stress because a lot of the times you have to dart them and then redart them and they become very skittish and they don't like the vehicles and also I, if I've learned something by watching particularly lions in the last few years is that they're very resilient animals and sometimes we get really scared because there's a lot of blood and we're really worried but they just have a way of pulling through they're very, actually very, very strong creatures and I think that's probably where the name the king of the jungle really does apply to them. So unless it's a, it's a human cause problem, like for example a snare around somebody's foot or neck or ankle, you are looking like a proper warrior now. Look at that. Then no, we do not intervene. This is a natural environment and that's part of the beauty and the horrible part of it. 
we let uh, nature take its course and we let animals sort themselves out. <laughs> For a moment there I thought he was biting his own tail. <laughs> oh, he is pulling his tail. That is quite funny. Also getting the tail very clean. <laughs> Oh, this is quite funny. A lion pulling its whole tail. <laughs> Alrighty. Very beautiful. So he has been cleaning himself quite a bit, so I wonder if perhaps he didn't move around and that's why there is a lot of more blood. But if you've got any questions, we or any comments, we actually love hearing from everyone who's watching. So if you want to send us a tweet using the hashtag Safari Live or on the YouTube channel, we are more than happy to hear from you and address any possible questions that you may have. Like I said, we've been sitting with this male lion, which has been quite fantastic in the sense that his head is up and he's moving a little bit around and he's allowing us to see what's going on. Because often lions will sleep throughout the day and what if he were lying on the side it would be quite difficult to actually see any of these wounds and of course we don't want to get that close because then we would bother it and likely he would go away and start moving but I think the fact that he's got his head up and that he's um, cleaning and grooming himself so thoroughly could be that maybe he wants to move Jared Burry, you're wondering what we would do with the, with the dead lion and if there's any information that gets taken from it. Yes, so whenever there's a dead lion that's found, it is reported to the conservation officers of the reserve and then they are responsible for doing a post-mortem exam of the animal. Often they will also to take the animal parts because, uh, or to try and avoid any possible um, theft of animal parts. Uh, lion bones in particular, lion skins, are the same as leopards and some other parts of some other animals, are very prized in black markets. So it's, it's a way of trying to avoid the temptation of leaving uh, the skull of a lion here and somebody else coming and eating it or taking it or selling it or whatever the case. But the first step would be, like I said, they would do a full post-mortem exam to try and find out if it died from natural causes, blood loss, etc, etc. Just to rule out any possible diseases or anything that might, um, that might be harmful for the environment or perhaps other lions that might be living in the area. Are you going to get up, boy? I think you might just get up. The weather is good. Oh, or are you, what are you doing? Are you getting up? Are you getting, going down? Are you scratching? I think Tinio hasn't quite decided what he wants to do. Perhaps he's just going to scratch for a little while. We are going to stick around with him just in case he does decide to move. Because often they will go down and carry on sleeping. But while they do that, let's go to Jamie who's got some tiny little bit lions.